Eric Watson wanted to be a commercial airline pilot. So why am I standing here in Watson's hat shop where he's making hats for people all over the country and in Hollywood? Well, that's the story today, next on Significant Insights. I'm on location today in Stagecoach Village in Cave Creek, Arizona, and I'm in Watson's Hat Shop. Eric Watson is the owner, he's a man of faith, one of the reasons I wanted to do the program, but also Eric has become one of the best hat makers in the United States and now is becoming known in Hollywood. But this wasn't always the way it was. He and his wife Emily had completely different career paths, but in the providence of God, they ended up with this, Watson's Hat Shop in Cave Creek, Arizona. Hey, thanks for taking time with me. I, I have been looking forward to this. Well, obviously, the first question is, how did you get interested in hat making? I mean, this is, a, this is an, an unusual kind of business. There's not that many high quality hat shops in the United States. How did you get started? Well, since I was uh, a kid, around 10, 11 years old, that's when I got inspired with hats because of Indiana Jones. And so I, was, that, was that part of the reason, Indiana Jones? Yep, that's was it really? pretty much what started this whole snowball. That old dirty hat that he wore? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How did you learn it? When I was a kid, before I even had a driver's license, my mom would take me to old uh, antique shops. Because um, really? being from Ohio, there were antique shops everywhere. And so I would find some you know, old hats, old hat blocks. And uh, I'd ride my bike down to the library and do research for hours on end. And, and uh, I'm very persistent. So, and I, and I love gaining knowledge of things as much as possible. I took old hats apart that were 1940s and earlier, and I would rebuild them. Now, while I did it, I would actually take photos and pictures with like, you know, the old style camera. That's how I self-taught myself early on. Later, I reached out to some old hatters and we would talk on the phone for hours. You also <laughs> had a, a passion for the airline industry. Yeah, uh, Emily and I are both are commercial pilots. Um, we met in flight training. So you had about eight years uh, uh, education in the aviation industry, mm -hmm. a couple of degrees. Uh, you ended up a baggage handler. Yep because you wanted to be close to the aviation industry and stay in it as best you could? I, uh, I took a job that I could get in the airline industry. Um, I was an intern and then I was able to get a job uh, as a bag baggage handler. Um, and during that time, um, I actually uh, fell and broke my back and that put me on a commission. The recession took place. We had friends that were getting furloughed and oh, yeah. that had been in the airlines already. And uh, I told her, I said, well, you keep doing what you're gonna do with your uh, flight instructing. And I said, I'm gonna think about making hats. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing that. that. <laughs> I'm him. seeing that look <laughs> on your face. <laughs> I was like, are you, what, is, what does that mean? What is that yeah. gonna do for us? <laughs> So we didn't know at the time, but yeah. yeah. So she's she she looked at me. She's like, uh, well, I su I support you as long as you help pay the bills. Yep. And I said, okay. <laughs> so we ended up buying a couple old hat shops that were a big blessing to building the business. One of the hat shops started in 1860, closed in 1989. So you had enough to start mm -hmm. the shop. Was that scary? A little bit. <laughs> he would use my old. Uh, uh, soup pot, <laughs> boil water, and that's how he would get the steam <laughs> for, oh, you're kidding. for steaming the hats. <laughs> yeah. And he basically took over our entire uh, little one-bedroom apartment yeah. we had at the time. So did you start? <laughs> you started it in Ohio. In started Ohio. in Ohio. He took over our one-bedroom little apartment at the time uh, when he first started, and there was fur flying all <laughs> over the place. I couldn't keep anything clean. <laughs> now you're involved, and you're doing some design of your own, Emily. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about what you're doing. 
Um, so I, I decided uh, to come into the business a couple years ago full time and uh, mostly at, in the beginning I was helping him run the business, work the office, things like that. Um, but then when I would, you know, finish my work in the office, I would say, oh, Eric, you know, I can teach me some of this stuff. I can help you get caught up. And, and so he taught me how to sew, uh, gave me some materials and said, see what you can do. We need, we need ladies hats in this shop. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, let's do it. Let's make a Lady Watson collection. And um, just one thing after another, a little trial and error. And I'm making a lot of uh, ribbon flowers, uh, vintage designs that aren't seen anymore. Is that hat hats. band one of your designs? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Very nice. And what she won't tell you is that she's very artistic and before she went into aviation, she had a scholarship <laughs> for an art degree yes. at Miami Oxford University that she gave up and went into flying. You know, instead. <laughs> <laughs> but if I never started flying, I would never have met Eric. Well, yeah. but, but you know, it, it, it's interesting because you go back through biblical history mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think Peter ever saw himself as a preacher. No, uh, but not, Jesus yeah. saw him as a preacher. He was a fisherman. Mm -hmm. And if you go through and you could you could say that about so many people in the Bible, their life started in a particular direction. And that was that was where they thought they were going to end up. And yet somewhere in there, God interrupted and took them a different direction. But in that direction, all of the experience they had had in the past still added up oh, yeah. to what mm -hmm. they became. And you got you guys thought you were going into the, <laughs> to the flight industry, yeah. and yet all through your life, God had given you creative gifts, mm -hmm. you had had another passion, and God knew where you were going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and all along, he had trained you for that. Oh, yeah. We'll continue our conversation with the Watsons right after this. If you actually look at it, you're starting to see a sheen started to occur on this uh, fur felt. So what's happening is the oils are actually being compressed out to the surface right now really? that are in the beaver fur. Welcome back. I am in uh, Stagecoach Village, Cave Creek, Arizona, and out at a place called Watson's Hat Shop. Eric and Emily Watson make some of the world's best hats on vintage equipment that they have purchased from all over the world. And the story today is how God has intervened in their lives and taken them from the career that they had intended, commercial airlines, into this incredible hat business that is flourishing and building a reputation not only in the United States, but also in Hollywood. Now you have been, uh, you're now designing hats mm -hmm. for a Netflix series. Mm -hmm. How did that come about and what are you doing with it? We were asked to make the hats for the Godless series on Netflix and they said they were having a difficult time working with the current hatter that <laughs> they had been working with. And I said, well, I said, well, what, what, you know, what would you like? What do you need? She got the first hat and then she's like, Eric, this hat. And I was like, what's wrong? It's too beautiful to distress. We have to distress <laughs> it. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, now you know what like really nice quality looks like. So, <laughs> well, so now your name's out in Hollywood. You know, who knows what's going to happen with all that. Yeah. So, what is it that makes a Watson hat unique? When I created Watson's Hat Shop, I wanted somebody to come in and experience the quality of back in the day, like early 1900s, and also feel it when they come in. So the way that the shop was built out, and I had this in my mind for a while before we were able to do this, and that was when they step in, they walk back in time. And it's mm. like a functioning museum. We like to call it that, and it really is. And the quality of the hats that you'll find that are actually antique hats from the early 1900s is that same top notch quality and detail that we do here at Watson's Hat Shop. Okay, so here we are at, at the equipment. How, Eric, are hats made? So we use all vintage equipment in our shop to and make And this hats. is vintage? This is vintage. We've restored it. It's from the 1920s. It's a very rare uh, hatter's steam table is what it's called. And this is the brim press, the steam pot. Uh, this is actually the shaper down here. Whoa, so whoa. we use that to shape the, the hats. 
And then uh, Alex right here has actually got a raw base material here, a pure beaver felt body uh, that's not, nothing's done to it at this point. And so he's actually gonna show us the first step of, Good. of how we would get extremely hot and block it. Whoa. So it throws off a lot of steam. So you don't want your hands near that too much. So he's getting this super hot right now. It's opening up all the beaver uh, fur uh, microscopic barbs by uh, introducing extreme heat. And you're actually gonna watch this block. This block's actually gonna start kind of falling into the felt as that happens. And he's gonna just give it a little push. Now, is this a certain size hat that what he's putting in there makes it a certain size hat? Well, yeah, this is uh, the block that he has is the size that ah, the hat okay. will be that that he's starting to make so right now. The hat I have on yep. went through this process. Yeah, every hat goes through this process. Yeah, we truly make them uh, from scratch. So there you go. That's the first stage. Wow. Well, this process is actually called crown ironing. And so what we're doing here is actually going to condense the beaver barbs of the felt body that's on here and it's a part of the hat making and process. And this is still a vintage piece of vintage machinery? Yes, yep, this, for the, this is actually from the 1920s, wow. this particular now, where did you get? Where did you get this? Um, I actually bought this off of an old uh, hatter and uh, I, I knew that he had it so I just kept coming back to him over about a year period and. He finally ended up selling it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see this process. That looks very yep. interesting. So Alex is actually going to be wetting uh, the beaver fur felt. And uh, so what we're doing is we're introducing moisture into the fur. And we're going to apply this crown ironing machine to it. It's extremely hot and uh, like a branding iron type of hot. Well. And so this is actually going to rotate back and forth on the crown of the hat. And it's on just a rubber belt back there. This is not digital. I mean, this is... No, this is an old motor uh, pulley system. And uh, so it's a, just an electric motor that's hooked onto a rubber pulley or rubber belt on the pulley. And so. that's just enough pressure that's supposed to be applied to the hat. And it, yes. is it, it, it's compressing? It's, it's compressing. You're actually, if you actually look at it, you're starting to see a sheen start to occur on this uh, fur felt. So what's happening is the oils are actually being compressed out to the surface right now really? that are wow. in the beaver fur. Beavers are very oily in nature. Um, their, their fur is and their, uh, their skin is. So, so there's quite a bit of pressure right now being applied by the heat right there. Exactly. And this is going to be a cowboy hat when it's all done. Uh, okay, and so. this goes all the way around? To the this goes all the way back and forth, and we'll just keep running this for a while. So how long do you leave this on here to, to get it right? Every uh, body is a little different because it takes about set, about roughly close to eight uh, pelts of beaver fur to have one hat body made. Really? Yes. So since that's the case, uh, each beaver is individually a little bit different in its fur content, so uh, we have we have a good generalization, but we also have to watch it and we have to feel it as it goes around. Yeah. So. So it's a very custom kind of a thing. You're watching custom. it, you're feeling of it, and seeing, yes. and making sure that it's working. Yep. And uh, that's what Alex is doing right now, actually. So he'll do this for a little while, and uh, when it's ready, we're actually going to move on to the plating machine, and that's where we are actually going to condense the brim. Can we take a look at that? Yeah. So, Eric, this is the plating machine. Mm -hmm. So what happens here? Well, actually, this is a uh, plating machine that has been made for us off of a 1800s version plating machine. So, so this is a replica of a what replica. would... Yeah, okay. Yeah, because they're very rare. They're very hard yeah, to find. Yeah, I can imagine. So Alex here is actually going to show you how hot this machine actually is, and it's... It's, it's hot, so you definitely don't want to touch these, these plates. Um, so we're actually going to show you the process now. So here's a uh, felt, and uh, we're going to show you what it does to the brim. So he's going to wet it a little bit, and uh, there's about a thousand pounds of pressure roughly that's applied wow. to this. This literally is going to condense and compress the brim of the hat so that it's a nice 
density, and uh, it'll be ready for the, the finishing. How long do you normally leave it in here? Uh, about 30 seconds, roughly. Oh, really? So yeah. it doesn't yeah. take that long in here? Yeah, but we have to do it a few different times. Oh, okay. So you got to kind of bring it back to it and do it again. So about probably another like 10 or 15 seconds on it here. And you're going to see a big difference already that, okay. that will occur. Can we take a look at it? Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yep, go ahead. Wow. And you can see how condensed that can is I touch already. It? It's pretty hot. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you see it's already it's starting mm -hmm. to smooth out already. Yeah. And then what he'll do is he'll end up actually putting it back in again and condensing it. He'll turn it. So how many times will you put it through there? About three, usually, for cowboy hat. You see how much pressure. Yeah. <laughs> so. so that's about a thousand pounds. Yeah. Does it, we talked over here about it pressing some of the oils out. Yeah, same thing is occurring here really? as okay, well. Okay, so yeah, it'll do the same thing the, here. There's so much pressure that's happening that those barbs are heating up and getting hot so much that uh, this time we're going to actually pull it out and we're going to take it over here and lay it flat on the table mm -hmm. and then we're going to show you how rigid and stiff the hat will be Good. because of it so okay yeah so we'll do that next wow. go ahead and take it out now. very interesting so again this hat that i have on that you made it, it went through the same process same yep same process so we're gonna we're gonna do that right now so we'll head over that way good all Excellent. right follow us over <laughs> We just put this through the plating machine. Correct. So what's, what's happening now? So we actually brought it over here. So as it cools, um, it cools in a flat position. Okay. So that's actually what we did. And compared to when you saw it, when it was kind of flimsy, I want you to go ahead and just kind of pick it up and see how rigid and uh, condensed wow. the uh, brim is now. That's amazing because over there, it was rougher, number one. Yep. Number two, it was very flimsy. It was kind of hanging down. Yep. So this is what... A thousand pounds of pressure yeah. will do. Yep. Makes a strong, durable cowboy hat. Wow. So, are we At, close to the last stage? No. <laughs> this is not it yet. After this, but we... But there's one stage you're not going to talk about, that's, right? That would be the next stage that after this the point. The next stage. So, that's a trade secret, and we're pretty proud of uh, our finishing technique here at Watson's Hat Shop. So, um... Our, our beautiful finishes, that's one of the things that we're known for. Well, that does bring up an interesting point. So, generally speaking, in a lot of hat shops, this would be the last stage or the next to the last stage, and that, well, and some, except they, they put a band on it and they form it yeah, and they put some, the... Some places uh, will somewhat refine a hat, but they may not do it all the way through, yeah. like traditionally in the early 1900s like they did, and because one, they uh, don't want to do it, or two, uh, they may not know how to do it. Um, so uh, we're, we actually go the whole way. Now, we do have a hat up here that you can see that is to the point through the finishing process. And I just want you to see how smooth Whoa. and you know beautiful that is at this point. And, it, it, and that's only halfway done. We're only halfway at this point. Wow. So. I mean, it feels good to the touch, which, which mine does. Yeah, know. exactly. Mine, now, yep. mine has that secret. You have the signature. Okay. <laughs> so, it's a very refined uh, beaver fur felt finishing process, and uh, there's hardly anybody that knows how to do it to that degree anymore. Wow. And then above that, it's beaver mink fur. So. so, from here, <laughs> it goes into it, it starts getting formed, and then... Mm -hmm. Uh, you actually will form this to the customer specifications as to what they want. Well, when I had this hat made, you and I went through yeah. this quite a bit because I wanted it a certain way. So we would have to send it down the line there to Emily where uh, she does the sewing and uh, we would start putting the, you know, sweatband in there, molding it to your head impression, um, doing all those sorts of things with, you know, the vermilion. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's just a, there's a lot to it. So. And then what comes out is one of the famous Watson hats. <laughs> That's exactly right. I love seeing the client's face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when they get one of our hats, I always grin because after they get their first hat, they're like, oh man, none of my other ones compare now. 
And so, and yeah. I love hearing that. She hears it all the time too. Well, you know, <laughs> this is this is a Watson hat, and I have a special box that I put it in every time I take it off. I wear it to special occasions. Yeah. I put it in that box, and otherwise, I'll wear one of my other hats. Emily, how would you respond to that question? I think what makes us unique and special is, like Eric said, playing on what he said. Uh, the experience. People come in here and they know, okay, they make hats, it's a hat shop, um, but they actually get to see not just what we make, but why we make it. They see that passion in all of us because we mm -hmm. come in here, this isn't our job, this is just our life. And so they can see that and it comes through in all the hats that we make. There's 64 steps that are mm -hmm. very much quality controlled. So they get that final product. Yes, it's beautiful, but they know what went into it. So, we don't people. want just a customer, we want a legacy. So yeah, it's not about the hats we yeah. make, it's more or less, it's about the people we meet along the mm -hmm. way, the lives we change, yeah. um, each other. And we try to keep God centered in our mm -hmm. lives and in our business, and as long as we do that, He'll keep blessing us. We'll have more right after this, stay tuned. When you're put into hard, difficult situations, and you have faith and you know you have God in your life he just strengthens you and makes you even stronger and he's he's like you can do anything Welcome back. Now we're going to continue our discussion with Eric and Emily Watson at Watson's Hat Shop. What part does faith play in your life? Oh, <laughs> everything. Everything that we do, every decision we make, um, whether it's financial or just moving the shop in a direction that we're not used to. We would just look at each other and just say, mostly Eric reminding me, because yeah. I would get a little anxious about certain things and say, well, you gotta have faith. And <laughs> just every day, gotta have faith. So uh, most of your life, you, you've been Christians, you have, you, you have lived, lived a little bit by faith. You always mm -hmm. wanted what God wanted for your life. Mm -hmm. Could you envision when you had that little place in your house and you're using a teapot to steam the hats, <laughs> could you envision this place? No, <laughs> no, I, I <clears throat> knew that it would go somewhere, but I never thought it would come to this. So, but through those hard times, and, and oh my goodness, we would, I mean, we've been through so many hard things at such a young age that it strengthened us. And I think that's one thing with being a Christian is when you're put into hard, difficult situations and you have faith and, you know, you have God in your life, he just strengthens you and makes you even stronger. And, and he's, he's like, you can do anything. He's just like puts, puts that in the back of your mind. He's like, you can do anything when you believe in me and you just keep moving forward and don't have that fear. Like one, one step at a time. One mm -hmm. step at a time. You know, Eric and Emily Watson are classic examples of God's providence working in their lives. They both started thinking they wanted to be in the commercial airline industry, but God had another plan. But not only that, he had been training them from early in their lives for this other plan that he had for them to have to be in the hat industry and to be some of the best hat makers in the United States. As I look through the Old Testament, I see a lot of examples of that. David, for example, was a shepherd. But God's plan for him was to be a king. I think of the Apostle Peter, a fisherman. He never imagined that he could have become one of the great preachers, but that was God's plan for him. You know, God has a plan for all of our lives, and he has a plan for your life. The Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge God in all of your ways, and he will direct your paths. God has a path for all of us, and as we allow him to work in our lives and direct that path, it'll be fulfilled. Thanks for joining me today. Good to have you. I'll see you next time on Significant Insights. Mm -hmm.